All good. Hi, everyone. We are the smallest team of this current batch. It's just two tech ladies and our coach, Ted. Uh, I'm Maria. This is Xin Yu. Uh, we're very happy that you are here. Thank you so much for coming. It means really a lot to us. And you're about to hear what we've been up to for the past three months. It all started three months ago with us meeting our client. It's HCSA um, Community Services. It's a multi-services multi organization that has been helping people in Singapore for the past 20 years. And they do so in many different areas. First one is High Point Halfway House, where they help ex-convicts get back into the society. Uh, then it's Day Spring Residential Treatment Center, where they provide a safe and healing living environment for teenage girls who have been repeatedly abused. And last but not least is Day Spring New Life Center, uh, where they provide help for unsupported pregnant women and their families. So from what, what I've already told you, you can see that it's a really big organization. They do a lot of great things. And of course, they have some problems. First one is you can understand that it costs a lot of money. Everything that they do, we're talking about more than a million dollars a year. And this money comes from people like you or, or me or us uh, with help of donors, volunteers, people who work at the organization. Uh, to gather all this money, they have to do a lot of events. They have to um, invite a lot of volunteers. It's a lot of work. And it's not just the money. It's, you can imagine, 20 years of, of this kind of work. It's spreadsheet on spreadsheet of volunteers' data, of donations, amounts, people data, people who work there. It sounds like a nightmare, and it was. Can you imagine how many man hours it took to go through the data, for example, to filter it or to add something new or to make some major changes? And of course, human error became inevitable in that case. And as all of your tech people, you've guessed that the solution for all of that was a donation management system, which we've created using Ruby on Rails. And we're here to tell you about how our application works. So here on the screen, you can see the home page of our application. When a HCSA manager uh, signs in, he will be uh, uh, directed to this page. And what it shows is basically the progress of the donations in the current year. Uh, and we organize the information in a few uh, ways uh, that's bite-sized for the manager to have a, have the inf be able to look at the information very quickly. So at the top, we basically see the total donations for 2017 so far is $11,017. And we also have a chart here that shows basically the amount that has been received uh, by the day and also by the different causes. So a few of the causes are like the halfway house or just for general purpose donations. At the bottom, um, we also have by the different causes, the top donors for each category and basically who they are and how much they have donated. So now we'll uh, demonstrate how we can make a, a new donation. And so we are very modest, so we'll make an anonymous donation. So we can basically click the, but, uh, the box over here to make an anonymous donation so we don't have to key in our NRIC details. And then we can input the amount we would like to donate as well as the, the or choose the cause as well as the event. And when we click the create donation button, it brings us uh, to the page where all the anonymous donations are listed. And there's a flash message at the top to tell us that the donation has been successfully created. So we see that the, there's already a few anonymous donations this year, and this is great. But uh, of course, anonymous donors don't give any of their information. So now we'll play a role game and pretend to be somebody else. Yeah, read a little bit. OK. So you can see there is a lot of stuff that can be entered for a donor, a lot of information from contact details to, for example, who created this donor in case there is some kind of mistake or we need to track the changes. 
Uh, we can see the address and we can even put some kind of a comment. For example, the person doesn't want to be contacted anymore or they moved out of Singapore or they're extremely generous and want to donate every week, something like that. Um, and here, I think there is a little mistake in the top donation. You can see that Mr. Wayne donated $55 on the 13th of January. It doesn't look like him. He's more generous, usually. I think the person who entered the donation made a little typo. But you can see that a lot of inf whatever you see on the screen, it can be edited by the admin. And this is what we are about to do. This looks much more like Mr. Wayne, $550. Looks much better, right? Uh, we updated the donation. Everything looks great. And if you pay attention uh, here, we can even see with whom Mr. Wayne shares accommodation. And this information is very important. For example, uh, very often HCSA said, sends um, physical mail to people to invite them for, let's say, charity dinner. But what happens if three people from one household donate to our organization? If you remember, we count every cent. We don't want to send three uh, three letters to the same household. So this information will be very helpful to people working at HCSA. Okay, so enough about Mr. Wei. Now let's look at other donors. So if you see at the top left hand corner, there are different links. And when we click on the donors uh, link, it brings us to a page where there's a list of all the donors in the system. And now we, uh, there's also a search function. And uh, we have searched for donors who have the number 88 in, in their NRIC. And so basically you see here there's 88. And basically, there are three donors that pop up, a total of three donors which have the, uh, the, the, the figures 88 in their NRIC. And we can also export this information of, of, of these donors in a CSV format. So if you think that this is not fancy enough, now let's move on to the highlight of our application, which is the reports function. So this is accessed by the reports button at the top left hand corner. And now instead of spending days going through massive Excel files, HCSA managers can see the data that they need uh, using this reports function with just a few clicks. So they can choose the year as well as the month, the course and the event which they would like to summarize and press the get report button. And this uh, basically gives an overview of what the donations in this category and uh, this year, this month. So basically you can see the details uh, below in the table. And now here we have chosen causes, uh, all the causes that are available. And if you see now, if we only choose RTC, then it will uh, basically only uh, show up the donors and the donations under this particular cause. So with this application, we hope that we have made a little change in this world, especially to HCSA. We hope that with this application, we added something to this world as well, because it added a lot to our lives. It added more than 60 finished Trello cards, more than 100 merged pull requests, over 500 cups of coffee. <laughs> but for people who know, we the way we counted coffee is one cup for me per day, one cup for Xenu, three cups for Ted, for people who know Ted. <laughs> We also wrote about more than 4,000 lines of code, which we're really proud of. And to be honest, sometimes this project was really hard. And personally, I faced some challenges, like our coding sessions were in National Design Center, which was freezing cold. <laughs> I think t some of tech ladies can relate to that. But <laughs> jokes aside, uh, we were asked to share some things that were difficult for us, and this is my input. For example, sometimes you Google something, you go on Stack Overflow, and you see something like this, and you just think that there is no for me for understand that. And what do you do then? You either give up, or you just stare at it blandly, and you still don't understand it. For me, the solution was go back to basics. Stack Overflow, amazing place where people are so kind to explain what they're writing. So you just go through not just the, the code that they give, but you go through the explanations, you go through other people's comments, and you write down the terms that they're using. 
And what I've been doing for, for many, many hours, I just Google those terms and I go back to basics, back to, back to theory, and I read up on that. And very often it really helped me to understand this stuff in the end. Even if it didn't, it wasn't time wasted because I've learned a lot. I guess that's, that's my advice to people who are just getting into that and who are facing difficulties in the beginning. And one more thing that I would like to add is that it's, it's very hard to start in a new industry where there are a lot of people who, are, who can be younger than you, who can, but they're amazing. They're fantastic. They're doing so well and so fast. And I feel that there is no way for you to catch up. And it takes a lot of courage and time to stop comparing yourself to those people and to just turn the feeling of I know nothing into, wow, there is so much more for me to learn and I will never get bored. This is very, very important. And I found myself very often in a situation where I have to repeat this to myself. And in the end of my speech, I would like to thank very much Elisha and everyone who participated in this project. It taught me a lot. And right now, or from now on, when I face something that is out of my comfort zone, something that I've never done before, I will be remembering this project and thinking that we did well, it turned out pretty well, and we survived. So what else is there to fear? <laughs> and Xinyu has some things that she would like to share as well. So for myself, it was also a very challenging experience. It was my first time working with a team to build an app from scratch and uh, often having to absorb a lot of information in sometimes uh, very unstructured ways. And often um, I, I felt that I was lost while everyone is moving ahead. But I've learned uh, through this experience how basically a massive task like an entire app can be broken down into bite-sized milestones and conquered gradually. And uh, with all the support and patience uh, from my teammate Maria and our coach Ted. And uh, throughout this, I uh, also learned that the process can be really fun and rewarding. So like Maria, I'd like to thank Elijah and as well as the rest of Tech Ladies uh, for this opportunity and experience. Thank you very much, guys. And so, what do you do for a living? <laughs> <laughs> um, my husband and I would do photography tours to the high Arctic. We take people from all over the world and we take them to places like Norway, Svalbard, which is an archipelago not far from the North Pole, to Iceland, Greenland, Russian Arctic, and places like that. So we are photographers and adventurers. Uh, for myself, uh, I work in a different field. I'm an economist. Yeah, so the, the uh, dealing with uh, data on Singapore, mainly. <laughs> Okay, you can ask you can grab them after the event as well. Thank you so much. Run out of